Hi guys, welcome back. It's Professor Hank. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use unions in your C++ programs. I'm going to show you how to create them. I'm going to show you how to define variables that are unions. I'm going to show you how to assign values to them. We're going to talk a little bit about what the theory is behind unions, what the pros are, what the cons are, and uh, so on. And, and I'll write you a program in Visual Studio community that gives you an example of of all of this stuff okay so let's let's dig into it so what's a union a union is like a struct that uses less memory all right and so you're thinking to yourself right what's a struct well if that's you I'll leave a I'm gonna leave a link in the description below to a video I have going through structs in C++ for everybody else it's like a struct okay so uses less memory. What do I mean by that? Okay, so consider that you have a struct of, I don't know, um, an integer in a character field, right? So it contains an integer and a character in your struct. That would take up five bytes of memory, one for the character, four for the integer, all right? But with a union, you're not gonna have that. Both the character and the integer are gonna share the same memory location. In other words, you're gonna share the same four bytes. All right, so the advantage is less memory. Now, what's the disadvantage? There's always pros and cons with everything, right? The disadvantage is, is you can only use one of those at a time, or you can only use a union to store one of those things at a time. So it's either gonna store the character or it's gonna store an integer. You can't do both, all right? So if you need to optimize your memory usage, a union might be what you need, it might be your solution. You often see unions, I've seen unions being used in systems programming a lot to, to conserve on resources, right? Because when you're creating an operating system and you wanna be as tight as possible, especially on embedded systems and things, this is a way that you can save some memory. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. Program that I'm gonna write for you, we'll just create a struct that just has an integer and a character, or excuse me, a union that has an integer and a, and a, and a character in it. So to do this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the keyword union. Okay, so we'll say union, and then you have a tag, you have a name for it. So we'll say foo, okay? And then we'll go ahead and put a character in there, and we'll put an integer in there. Okay, now that we have a definition for what a foo is, we've created a foo. Now let's define a variable of type foo, okay? So now with our foo, we can assign to it a character or an integer. So we can do something like this. We could say f.c equals um, j, say, okay? And then if I see out f.c, okay, and then I build that and run it for you, okay, you're gonna see in the output, guess what? You're gonna see j, okay? So there it is. Now, I can also, or I can alternatively, store in the foo variable that f variable i can store an integer okay so let's say 99 all right so if i was to say uh see how f dot i what are you going to see you're now going to see the 99 okay but here's the thing so you can see it here's the thing the the bits that represent the J, they've been wiped out. They've been overwritten by all of the bits that represent the 99, okay? So what do I mean by that? Well, let me, let me try to explain it to you, okay? So when you create a variable of type foo, okay? How many bytes are there? Well, I said at the beginning that we were gonna have four total because both fields, both variables there, the C and the I, they share the same four bytes. Okay, so if I do C out size of uh, F, okay, there's four bytes, okay, because the integer is four bytes, you get the number of bytes that's the biggest member of the union, okay? So of those four bytes, all right, when that gets created, F is gonna have four bytes, okay? Now when we, assigned to it j that j occupied the first byte what's in the rest of the bytes i don't know right garbage whatever just happened to be in that memory location when we assigned j to the union okay now if i see out f dot c i get 
J, right? Because it retrieves the data in that first byte. But then as soon as I assign 99 to f dot i, the j gets overwritten. We need all four bytes now to represent the 99, okay? So that bit pattern that makes it the j is gone, okay? It's the bits from the binary representation of 99 for the first byte that are now occupying that first byte. So when you see c out f of i, you see the 99 because all four bytes are being used to represent the 99. Now, what would happen if I were to see out f dot c, right? Now remember, I told you the j is gone. So what are we going to see instead? We're going to see whatever ASCII is represented by the bit pattern of that um, of that first byte, right? So 99, is, there's a bit pattern in binary that represents the 99, and that requires all four bytes. The first byte, which was C, which contained J, got overridden by all the bits, or the, those part of the bits that make up the first byte of 99. Okay, so that's why you see C there. Now let me use um, a different number because C, or maybe I'll just maybe I'll just change this variable name here, right, to D, right? Because you look at that and you're like, oh my gosh, it's just printing out the name of the variable. No, that's not that's not what's happening. Okay, so we'll change all of this to D just to prove that it's not just the, the name of the variable itself. Okay, so you're gonna see that it's still gonna show you the C because that's the bit pattern in that first byte um, that's there after we assign 99 to, um, to, our, to, our, to our foo. Okay, so that's the basics of uh, unions. Okay, and um, you can pass these guys as arguments to to functions as well. Okay, so experiment with that on your own. But let me show you one more thing here. I want to show you anonymous unions. Okay, you don't have to give unions names if you want to still have that same kind of um, memory savings. But you don't want to have to declare a variable of type foo, for example. You could just do something like this: put it inside of a scope, inside of a block somewhere. Okay and then use that keyword union. And then inside the curly braces for the union, this is an anonymous union. Okay, declare your variables that make up those fields. So say int x and double d, okay? So now you can assign something to x, you can assign something to d, but the total amount of memory used up here is eight bytes not 12 because both the x and the d share the same eight bytes okay so now i can do something like this i could say well x equals one okay and then if i see that x okay you're going to see the one okay but then as soon as i do something like d equals uh, 3.1415918, blah, 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 right? Now I'm taking up all of the double, right? All all eight bytes to store the 3.1415579. So I could say, see out D. Okay. And the same principle applies here, right? I'm just using integers and doubles instead. So now when I see D, there's 3.14159. Now, why didn't I see the rest of these decimal places? Well, because I didn't format the output, right? Um, because the default field size is six characters, okay? Now, maybe I'll give you a different number here. Maybe I'll say something like, oh, 1010.24 or something, okay? So now we see our 1010.24, okay? Now, what will I see if I see out x? I'm not sure, I don't know, we'll find out. But, but remember that the same principle is going to apply, okay? So what do I mean by that? What I mean is, is that int x takes up the first four bytes of the eight, okay? And so as soon as I assign something to d, I overwrote those first four bytes with all of the bits that make up 1010.24. Okay, so let's just see what is in X. I don't know. Okay, 
Okay, so here's what's in X, negative two, whatever the big number this is, uh, 2 billion, 61,000, no, 2 billion, what is that? 2 billion, 61 million, 584,302 negative, right? Um, because that got overwritten when we assigned 1010.24 uh, to D, because we needed all, we needed all eight bytes in that situation, so we reclaimed the first four bytes from X, which had been storing one. Okay, so yeah, there you go. That's everything that I have for you in this video. So hopefully you found the video useful. If you're a student of mine, as usual, you know the drill. Send me an email with any questions about half stuff on my office hours. Send me up on Zoom. For everybody else, if you thought the video was useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you thought the video sucked, you got the thumbs down as well. Consider supporting the channel in various ways. We've got memberships with additional perks for us. Little ones, 99 cents a month. Got super thanks you can hit there as well. Consider leaving a comment, hit the bell, you know, whatever. But most of all, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.